Craft Danny here, and I like to start things off with a little light reading. The problem with people who hand out fucks like ice cream in a goddamn summer camp is that they don't have anything more fuck-worthy to dedicate their fucks to. If you find yourself constantly giving too many fucks about trivial shit that bothers you, your ex-boyfriend's new Facebook picture, how quickly the batteries die in the TV remote, missing out on yet another two-for-one sale on hand sanitizer, chances are you don't have much going on in your life to give a legitimate fuck about. And that's your real problem, not the hand sanitizer, not the TV remote. I once heard an artist say that when a person has no problems, the mind automatically finds a way to invent some. Part 3. It's a doom loop of the stupid. So I figured I'd better chime in here with my own experience with gossip and call out culture. You see, it doesn't have to necessarily remain online in the case of me and my husband's. One of us was part of this Telegram group that we were invited to, and we left due to finding the people there kind of trashy and annoying. This supposed friend of ours, a person we gave money to so he could afford the rent due to the fact that he had a job that he couldn't keep, pressured us. He pressured us into finding out the reason why we left. And a honest answer was given. So apparently this was calling his 120 members on this group trashy. Like there were his friends, his intimate friends that he knew so well to the point that he felt the need to defend their honor. And so some insults were thrown around. And don't ever respond to insults in any way. It's not worth it. Nonetheless, the matter was ended. Or was it? Dun dun dun! This person had the time to go to various fur meets that we didn't attend. Uh, chat rooms, telling everyone we knew, might have known or didn't know, how shitty we all were, how horrible people we all were, and that, oh, if Andy ran off with me, he'd be better off than w with his husbands, or, you know, stupid shit like that. So, how do we handle this situation? How do we, what, what do we do next? What did I do next? Went to sleep, like a baby, got up, had some eggs, Watch the Manamu. You get the fucking picture, we did nothing. Three months later, we get this random message from this person claiming to know the new place that we moved into and that he's going to destroy our shit and we gotta stop talking shit about him. As if we were in some kind of high school situation that we were going around and spreading random rumors and conjecture about him. So what do we do next? Put it up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, DTube, Mertube, Blogspots, Clicksters. Clicksters, hello. DeviantArt, BitChute, LiveJournal, Friendstar, MySpace, IRC, SoulFurry, InkBunny, KinkBunny, Hentai Foundry, BuzzFeed, Advocate, then make a call out post about this person? Went to the police, filed a report, saved the message, called it a day. You see, I guess we were living rent-free inside this person's head. And I imagine it included others, too. This person turned out to have screwed over some normie friends of ours before he even knew who we were. <sighs> and sure enough, things started to come back on him. He actually tried to join some groups that I was in, and my husband's were in, and promptly got kicked out. Without even, without even talking to the mods. He just showed up and then booted. Just like that. You see, people like this tend to burn themselves in the end. Because it doesn't even matter. Had to fall to lose it all. Because in the end, it doesn't even matter. When you run your fucking mouth to various people you hang out with, in parties and groups, to people you don't really know that well, the question comes up, how long will it be before you start talking shit about them? about some trivial annoying habits in order to or some quirks that they have some social quirks in order to make some conversation I have to admit that I wish I was more outspoken about it it goes back eight years ago I remember sitting at a table at a restaurant having some breakfast with some people and they were talking about how they were trolling this one guy regarding his mercy content 
and how much shit they were giving him about him and his commission porn and all this other stupid shit. It's funny because now he's a full-time YouTuber, so I guess the joke's on them. These guys were supposed to be his circle of friends. These were guys that hung out with him on a regular basis. They did things with him. They go. They went to events with him. At the time, I just sat there listening to them, not really giving my opinion about anything. Just sat, sitting there silently like a fucking coward. Granted, I didn't involve myself with any of it, but it's not a proud moment to share. It sucks. I've had my weak moments as well, and thankfully it doesn't involve anything illegal. Just participating in gossip culture with certain people I knew, and it's ugly, and I regret the very small amount that I participated in with it. You know, talking shit about people while keeping face while they're around. It's so petty and small. Even with the most recent incident, I don't despise this individual for what he said or did. I don't constantly think about him in my day-to-day -day life or bring it up with everyone I walk across. I, I don't worry about him. I mean, do I worry about ants that I walk across the street? Well, I mean, I kind of do. I mean, they're, they're fucking cute. They're adorable. Like, Auntie from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. You remember Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, right? Or Anthony. Anthony from Ant-Man. You remember Ant-Man, right? Thing is, even without a sorry, forgive me, I've technically forgive this person. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. Are you pressing charges? Hell yeah. It doesn't mean I have to include him in my life. It doesn't mean I have to give him the time of day still. I can keep my distance from this person. And really, in the end, how, how often could I bring this up? How often could I bring this incident up before it starts to get annoying and excessive? Anyways, this has gone on long enough. Point is, call-out culture is dumb. There are a million ways to better spend your time other than worrying about some stupid shit that doesn't matter, no one cares about, outside of making some snide online comment or giving fuel for the next Mr. Medicare video. Take hearsay with a grain of salt. Just a, a little bit of skepticism. Keep in mind that it's an ego trip to watch big people fall. Worry about your loved ones, your friends. Or you can just blast me on Twitter and jerk off. I don't care. I'm working on the next project. Anything else you want to add, Michael Ringtail? Eat shit and die? Yeah, fuck you too. I want to clarify one thing too. This is not a, an attempt to say that callouts need to go away entirely. I mean, if you have someone doing bad business practices, uh, donating money to hate groups, things of that nature, someone doing something actually deplorable or illegal, it's one thing to call those people out. It's another thing entirely to either misconstrued a story, take something out of context, or just resort to outright lies or petty high school type of drama. Now, social media, the internet, has connected so many people, and it's also created a new type of problem of having everything you say overanalyzed by people who have just way too much goddamn time on their hands and no other hobbies to keep them busy. So, I, I, once again, I encourage you to read some of the articles down below and just have a little bit of skepticism. Give them the benefit of doubt and... Perhaps just have a little bit of empathy and room for redemption and growth for people who make mistakes. I'm Crafty Andy. I'll see you next time. I was once part of call-out culture, and, and I did this other thing. Well, back in many years ago, guess what? I don't care about it anymore, and... And who really gives a shit about it.